Ethiopia's Zaheli Gubi volcano has erupted for the first time in recorded history. It's thought to be nearly 12,000 years since it last erupted. The earth breathing, ancient and alive in a surge of fiery motion, five volcanoes erupted across the world within just 72 hours. Now, some Indian airlines have cancelled flights because of massive ash plumes from an Ethiopian volcano. A volcano in Ethiopia just exploded after 12,000 years of absolute silence. And the blast was so violent, it launched ash across continents like it was firing a geological warning shot at the world. One moment, Haile Gubi was a harmless ancient mountain nobody paid attention to. The next, it woke up with the fury of a planet that's been holding a grudge since the Stone Age. A 14-kilometer ash plume shot into the sky, so massive NASA satellites immediately locked onto it. And then the ash kept traveling, over Yemen, over Oman, across Pakistan, straight into India, where flights were suddenly grounded because of a volcano that erupted thousands of miles away. Yes, Africa sneezed, and Asia caught a cold. This wasn't just an eruption. This was Earth switching its do not disturb sign to try me. And that brings us to the first wild truth behind this event. Haile Gubi last erupted when humanity was still figuring out how to hunt without getting eaten. That was about 12,000 years ago, long before writing, agriculture, or anyone arguing with strangers online. In other words, this eruption is the first one any living human has ever witnessed. And when it finally woke up, it didn't just clear its throat. It blasted a skyscraper tall tower of ash deep into the stratosphere, so high it looked like Earth had launched a volcanic missile. But while that's jaw-dropping, the after-effects are even crazier. Because this ash did not politely stay within Ethiopia's borders. It went global, literally. That ash cloud drifted across multiple countries before rolling into Delhi, a city whose air already has enough problems without volcanic seasoning. Pilots were warned to avoid the area like it was a no-fly zone built out of sandpaper. Ash can shred jet engines, block visibility, and turn million-dollar aircraft into oversized paperweights. Air India cancelled flights. Akasa Air suspended Middle East routes. Aviation authorities scrambled, all because a volcano in East Africa decided it was time for a comeback. The idea that a volcanic sneeze in Ethiopia can shut down airports in Asia feels absurd until you look at where this volcano actually sits. And that's where things get truly wild. Haile Gubi lies inside the Afar Depression, one of the most geologically ferocious zones on Earth. This is where the African plate and Arabian plate are ripping apart like they're dividing assets in a continental divorce. And that slow, unstoppable tearing creates perfect pathways for magma to rise to the surface. Scientists monitor this region like it's a reality show. Earth's crust stretching, lava chambers filling, volcanoes popping off. It's messy, dramatic, and always active. And normally, a volcano in this region behaves a certain way. But Haile Gubi didn't get the memo. This volcano is a shield volcano, the chill, introverted type. Usually, it just oozes lava slowly, quietly, politely. But this time, it detonated like it wanted the front page of every newspaper on the planet. Shield volcanoes aren't supposed to generate explosive ash plumes. That's not their thing. Yet here we are, staring at a 14-kilometer umbrella of ash like it's auditioning for a disaster film. Scientists suspect recent activity from the nearby Urta Ella volcanic system may have helped push Haile Gubi over the edge. Volcanic peer pressure is real, apparently. But even before the explosion, Earth itself was dropping hints. Weeks before the eruption, satellites caught the ground around Haile Gubi rising by several centimeters. That's what happens when magma quietly builds pressure underground. It lifts the surface like dough rising before it explodes into a messy kitchen disaster. But monitoring the Afar region isn't easy. It's blisteringly hot, remote, and full of volcanic troublemakers. So that warning 
didn't get the spotlight it deserved. Still, when the blast happened, there was nothing subtle about the aftermath. Villages were suddenly coated in grey, livestock grazed on fields turned to ash. Homes looked like someone dumped a giant bag of powdered cement over them. Ash isn't just a cosmetic problem, it's a full-blown environmental curveball. In Ethiopia, grazing lands were coated in a suffocating grey layer, turning pastures into lunar landscapes. Livestock couldn't eat. Water sources were contaminated. Villagers had to evacuate, unsure if lava, gas, or more explosions were coming next. But the real chaos wasn't just on the ground, it was in the skies. Volcanic ash is one of aviation's worst nightmares. Each particle is basically microscopic glass. And jet engines, they heat that glass until it melts, then cool it until it hardens. It's like feeding a blender wet cement. Everything stops, everything breaks, and nobody wants to deal with the repair bill. So aviation authorities didn't wait. They issued alerts, forced flight path changes, scrambled meteorologists. Pilots were told to report any ash encounters immediately. Engine noises, weird smells, unusual vibrations, because even a small ash cloud can do million dollar damage. And as all this was happening, the ash plume kept drifting east, carried by high altitude winds like an uninvited guest who refuses to leave the party. Forecast models showed it pushing toward parts of China next. So now the question becomes far bigger than a single eruption. How far can one volcano's tantrum reach? And what does this mean for the rest of Africa's sleeping giants? The East African Rift is one of the most geologically active places on the planet. It's literally a continent tearing itself in half, slowly but relentlessly. As that happens, magma chambers shift, crust thins, and volcanic systems evolve. Scientists have long believed many volcanoes in the region are dormant, but Haile Gubi just rewrote the definition of dormant. If a volcano that's been asleep since the Ice Age can suddenly wake up and affect aviation halfway across Asia, what about the dozens of others nearby? Some are well known, some have barely been studied, and some, like Haile Gubi before this week, sit quietly in the desert, looking harmless until they decide not to be. This eruption is a flashing neon sign saying, the Rift Valley is alive, active, and unpredictable. And dormant does not mean harmless, even more unsettling. Satellites recorded signs of underground unrest, not just at Haile Gubi, but across multiple volcanic systems in the region over the last few years. Pressure is shifting, heat is rising. The tectonic plates are moving faster than usual. This doesn't mean Africa is about to explode like a giant piñata, but it does mean scientists are paying attention in a way they weren't before. Because if one volcano can cause this much disruption, imagine two, or three, or several erupting years apart, affecting travel, climate, agriculture, and entire regions. This eruption wasn't just a geological event, it was a global systems check, a reminder that natural forces don't need permission to disrupt our neat little schedules. While countries scrambled and satellites tracked the ash, the broader message became impossible to ignore. Africa isn't just the cradle of humanity. It's the cradle of immense, ongoing geological power. This eruption proved that even a remote, rarely discussed mountain can reshape global air traffic trigger international advisories, and redirect scientific attention across continents. And here's the twist, ending no one expected. This might not even be the peak of Africa's geological awakening. It might be the first chapter of a much larger story unfolding beneath our feet, which raises the question no one wants to ask, but everyone needs to think about. If this is what happens when one quiet volcano wakes up, are we ready for what comes next? And now I want to hear from you. Do you think this eruption is a freak event, a warning sign, or the start of a new phase in the Rift Valley's geological activity? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Let's see what theories you've got. If you found this breakdown eye-opening, hit that subscribe button 
turn on notifications, and stick around, because Earth clearly isn't done surprising us, and neither are we.